Good morning, everybody, all those who are here in person in the library of the historic archive of, the, of La Biennale di Venezia. Allow me to mention a friend uh, of ours, Andrea Purgatori, who is no longer with us. We all know how much he has worked for cinema as a script writer uh, and uh, as the representative of cinema in CIA, and then an institutional role, a journalist, a writer. Uh, needless to say that we will miss him. Um, we took part in the latest uh, Giornata degli Autori, an award to Citto Maselli, for the first time awarded by the different components of the International Film Festival of La Biennale di Venezia, but also by the representative of the authors who take part in the Venice Film Festival. I will be very short because as you know, Alberto has a lot of things to say, so I will leave uh, the time for him to do so. Lido, besides uh, ensuring um, a very rich uh, event with the titles coming from all over the world, despite the difficulties related to the strike of scriptwriters and actors in the US, and to the weather uh, problems uh, uh, in Venice. Uh, we hope there will be a pause in Venice. We are celebrating the 80th anniversary of the Venice Film Festival. Uh, we are celebrating every year. Last year it was 90, the 90, uh, 90th anniversary from its uh, uh, first edition. We have the 80th edition this year. We are not afraid of what is taking place in terms of changes, uh, technological changes, changes in language. We are facing, as we have always done, a film festival that, like the other arts in the Biennale, is able to live in the historic times. It is crossing, let us think of the latest four years from COVID to the dramatic emergencies we had to, to face because of the Russian invasion in Ukraine, protests and repression in Iran uh, for uh, human rights and uh, female freedom, directors who were uh, kept silence, the Taliban again in Afghanistan. Well, in these last four years, uh, the Venice Film Festival has been able to give responses and solutions, not solutions perhaps, but responses uh, facing important themes. And an institution like La Biennale di Venezia cannot ignore them. It has, in turn, uh, the obligation to document what is happening and to support uh, the artists, as we did with uh, artists from Ukraine and Afghanistan. Our commitment for carbon neutrality remains, uh, whether uh, destructions uh, uh, storms and uh, hail of these days are showing the consequences of uh, climate change. Last year, all events during the film festivals uh, within the Venice Biennale were certified carbon neutral. Uh, we continue on the same path. Already in 2020, we started working with the first initiative during COVID, despite COVID, it was a testing, uh, an important test for us. Lido has important uh, uh, new uh, solutions on the left of the casino. The, you will see uh, a, a, a construction that is extremely useful. It has a lift inside, but it also allows for uh, more safety and security with emergency exits. La Perla uh, room, uh, La Perla theater, has been totally renovated uh, in the structure, in technology. 
in furniture and also as regards accessibility. Sala Mosaici for the press conferences was tested last year. We are back with the protocols for photographers within the casino. Because the attempts last year were not successful, we were not satisfied, so we're going back inside the casino. A few details more, just to say that we are working day after day as we are working in the Arsenale and the other mainland headquarters, thanks to the uh, funds provided by the PNR our, our, um, funds to renovate and make safer and historic buildings to make more accessible and to increase the spaces for our activities in the mainland within uh, La Biennale. I remember, I want to remember you that the architecture exhibition is underway and that the dance festival is uh, still on, uh, directed by Wayne McGregor. Music will start on the music festival, we start on the 16th of October. Biennale is not just cinema. And the floor now to our director, Alberto Barre Barbera. Thank you, President. Welcome you all present here in the beautiful library of Azak and all those who are connected with us online. You know, the last week was quite, trouble, quite troubled, uh, the announcement of the strike of the actors and of the script, uh, of, the play, of the script writers has uh, surprised all of us. It was difficult to come to the end of a program that had already been finalized. I must say that Luckily enough, the consequences of this strike that has very good uh, motivations uh, we can agree to, uh, the impact is quite modest on uh, our uh, festival. The only movie we have lost as against uh, what we had planned is the opening movie, a beautiful movie by Luca Guadagnino, who has been postponed, its commercial release has been postponed to April 2024. The producers, uh, Amazon, MGM, and the international distribu distributors, uh, Warner Bros., have decided to withdraw the film that was uh, replaced by Il Comandante, by Eduardo De Angelis. The other American movies we had invited have been confirmed and will be present in the program of the festival. So allow me to thank producers, directors, who have decided to confirm their commitment with us and who will be present in the world debut of their uh, movies. A few stars will not be with us, um, actors and actresses, uh, uh, members of SAG uh, will not be present. We will have, however, actors and actresses who have worked in productions that are fully independent, and they are numerous in Venice. So we hope the red carpet won't be so uh, empty as somebody has uh, announced uh, in the last few days. It will be a festival fully representative of contemporary cinema. A few figures, the films we have received uh, were 4,061, uh, 2,100 feature films, 1,961 short films. The countries represented in the selection are 54 more or less the same number as we have every year. A few gender figures. Uh, uh, the titles directed by male directors proposed in the selection were 2,703, approximately 66% of the total. The female director movies 
1,298, approximately 32 percent, with a small percentage of directors who did not declare a gender, 60 movies, 1.48 percent. As regards the movies, we have selected 82 feature films, 14 short films, 29 of which are directed by women with a percentage that amounts to 30 percent, slightly more than the last few years. In the last few years, we are still far from the gender parity we all hope for. It is a slow process that is, however, going on. Let us start with the program. Let us start with Biennale College Cinema. We have three movies developed and produced by Biennale College. L'anno del uovo, The Year of the Egg by Claudio Casale. L'Umbre in Sueño, Fire Dream by Jose Pablo Escamilla, and Arni, a debut film by Dorca Vermes from Hungary. The movies will be screened on the 31st of August, on the 1st and the 2nd of September. The other section we are very proud of is Venice Immersive. The program has already been announced and uh, you should already uh, know it. Uh, Venice Immersive is the first and most important competition dedicated to virtual reality. It takes place on the island of Lazzaretto, which is a reference, a world reference for those who deal with this new technology applied to art and creation. Allow me to thank Michel Riac and Liz Rosenthal for the great job they have done in scouting and selecting the projects. So there are a total of 44 from 25 countries plus 24 works in the non-competitive non World Gallery session, 28 projects in competition, 10 projects out of competition as Best of Venice Immersive, the best works already distributed or presented in other events after the latest uh, Venice Film Festival, six projects that were developed in uh, Biennale College Cinema VR, and then, as I was saying, 24 worlds selected in the world's gallery. The other section we have already announced is uh, Venezia Classici, documentaries on cinema. I will, I, I'm announcing the Venezia Classici part. We have not yet provided uh, the names uh, of the movies nine films, nine documentaries on cinema in alphabetical order. The first ill for Bill Douglas, My Best Friend, by Jack Archer, Friend UK. Then we have a, a, a film with a curious title, Le Film Pronazi Ditchcock, by Daphne Bayweer, a French-American production. Thank you very much. That doesn't say a lot with the title, but it is a documentary on Andy Kaufman by Alex Braverman, U.S. Landrian by Ernesto Daranas Serrano, a documentary, a Cuban documentary for the greatest documentary director from Cuba. Uh, who is not well known in the rest of the world, uh, 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 a work that was uh, fought against by the uh, Castro regime. Uh, a few documentaries on Italian cinema. Un'altra Italia possibile is the first by Il Cinema, by Giuseppe De Santis, by Steve Della Casa. And then a documentary by uh, Michel Gondry, Do It Yourself, François Nemeta, France. A documentary 
dedicated to Ken Jacobs. Ken Jacobs from Orchard Street to the Museum of Modern Art by Fred Riedel, the second Italian documentary, Dario Argento Panico by Simone Scafidi. And finally, a documentary on Frank Capra, Frank Capra, Mr. America by Matthew Wells. And then we have the Horizonte section. You know, is uh, it is divided in two parts, Horizonte short films and Horizonte feature films. For short films, you see the list here. They are a lot, 13 short films coming from all over the world. And very often, they help us discover new talents we will see in competition for Horizonte short films. We have a, a young female author who took, who won the, uh, the best uh, short film award last year. We'll tell you later about that. As regards Horizonte feature films, uh, we have A Cielo Aberto by Mariana Santiago Arriaga, The Children of Guillermo Arriaga, son and daughter of Guillermo Ariaga, who wrote a screenplay many years ago. They have brought on screen today a road movie, three uh, boys who want to take revenge on the lorry driver who killed their father in a car accident. El Paraíso, the third uh, feature film by Enrico Artale. He had debuted in Venice with the Terzo Tempo in 2013, and then the second movie, and then he took part in TV series. He's back with this portrait of a 40-year-old man conditioned by a complex relationship with his mother until a Colombian girl arrives who will upset his life. You will discover why. Behind the Mountains, uh, I do not try to tell the original title. It, Tunisian movie, the third by Mohamed Benatia, a well-known director on the international scene. His first movie got the Lourdes d'Argent uh, at the Berlin Festival with his first uh, movie. And then he took part in the Kanzen, the realizateur, uh, the Kanzen, the cineast in Cannes, the story of a father who recently came out of uh, prison and who is trying to reveal to his son a strange power he has. The Red Suitcase, a debut film, coming from Nepal, a faraway country where cinema is moving its first steps. A nice debut for a young female director, Fidel Tefkota, a story of ghosts, referring to the painful past of the civil war that has upset Nepal, but also contemporary themes like uh, the recent uh, migration wave uh, from Nepal to the Gulf countries looking for jobs there and the detrimental consequences this has on the families that remained at home. A curious movie, Tatame, by two directors, a director and a female director, Guy Natif, an Israeli director, and Zahra Mir Ebrahimi, who is a well-known Iranian actress who had won an award in Cannes as Best Actress for the movie Holy Spider. Together, they co-direct a movie that narrates uh, a, a real story of a young judo wrestler from Iran who, during a competition, is asked to withdraw from the competition because she has to fight in the final match against an Israeli champion because of political reasons. You can imagine the story. It is uh, uh, the reconstruction of a real story, as I was saying. Paradise is Burning, uh, the view film coming from Sweden, another female debut uh, film, the story of three sisters who are a small sister and two adolescents who are running the risk of being separated because of an absent mother and of lurking social services. 
The Feather Wade by Robert Kolodny is a second movie by a director of photography who also worked on important movies with Laura Poitras in All the Beauty and the Bloodshed that won the Golden Lion in Venice last year. This is one of the two movies dealing with boxing we will see in Venice. The story is set in 1964, the story of a former box champion who withdrew from uh, the matches and uh, at 50 decides to go back on the ring to reconquer the title. The first of the three Italian movies we have in competition for Orizzonte, Simone Massi, you should know him, uh, an extraordinary uh, artist uh, in animation. He's the author of the animated the theme and posters of the first four editions of the film festivals from 2012 to 2016. Some short films of his have uh, received important awards in Italy and abroad. This is the first animation feature film that has required a great uh, work because he uses a special technique, extremely complex. It is the, an history of uh, Italy seen from below from a family of farmers uh, during last century witnessing the different historical events uh, in the latest 100 years. Hesitation Wound by Selma Nakar, uh, the second uh, movie by this uh, Turkish director. The first movie was Between Two Dawns, uh, presented in many festivals, uh, awarded in the Festival of Turin last year, two years ago. This is uh, the story of a lawyer, a female lawyer, who has to face uh, an ethic and professional dilemma that will involve the destiny of her mother, uh, ill mother, uh, the judge uh, of the uh, trial she's involved in, uh, and uh, a suspected murderer whom she's trying to have acquitted. From Brazil, we have a debut film uh, by uh, two young uh, directors, um, Sem Coração, Heartless, by Nara Normande and Tiao, developed from their short film that got an award in, uh, Cannes, in the Cannes Festival in 2014, the story of an adolescent in a small holiday village who is attracted by a girl, a local girl, who is uh, uh, defined as heartless, emarginated from the rest of the village. The second Italian movie in Orizzonti is Una Sterminata Domenica by Alain Parroni, a debut film that will, I hope, be at the center of uh, the debate. Parroni uh, has, uh, makes a rigorous uh, choice, abandoning traditional narrative models uh, in uh, Italian cinema to tell a story of nihilism and rebellion in the periphery of Rome. It is an almost purely sensory experience, uh, visual and musical uh, experience uh, that aims at becoming the manifesto of a lost generation. From Mongolia, we have uh, the movie of this young female director I was mentioning before, who won uh, the short film uh, competition Horizonti last year, City of Wind by Dulma Purev Otkir. The story, again, of two adolescents, uh, a recurring theme in many of the movies we will see this year in Venice. Uh, the ex exploration of uh, the dreams and uh, desires of these uh, girls and boys, an unexpected uh, uh, analysis of the sexuality of adolescents in a country where these themes are not easily uh, discussed. 
And there is also uh, a clash between modernity and tradition with a very personal and participated and sensitive look. And then a movie from you. Hungary, the third movie by Gabor Reitz, uh, ex an explanation for everything. One of the movies that uh, will be blamed for not including it in the main competition. Uh, I'm telling this to make you curious about it. The third movie by a promising director, uh, a disquieting uh, portrait of Hungary today. We recognize many uh, similarities with other countries in Europe. I'm not saying anything more. I'm not saying anything more because you will discover it. Then a movie by two American brothers, Bill and Turner Ross. They come from the world of documentaries. This is the first fiction film that, however, still maintains a documentary approach in telling the story of a group of uh, girls and boys who, after the end of their high school experience, start for a journey to the sea, uh, coming from a, a semi-desert area in, center, uh, in the central part of the US. They meet a lot of other boys and girls, uh, music and uh, a description of uh, the American landscapes. Something, something quite typical of on the road movies, American on the road movies, but with a very personal and original approach, Gasoline Rainbow. The only French film uh, in Horizonti by Céline Rosé and Attendant La Louis. It is a genre movie, a film of vampires. You expect everything from a female director but a vampire movie, uh, it goes beyond this genre. It, re it uses this metaphor to tell uh, about the discomfort in uh, the youth world. I will not add anything else. And then a film coming from North Macedonia developed in the eighth edition of Biennale College Cinema, uh, a vibrant apologue on the family today in the Balkans, on the value of paternity, of fatherhood, on the difficulty of being gay and being gypsy in that country, in that region. Goran Stolevsky uh, creates this uh, utopic, uh, a large family. A name you would not expect uh, in Horizonti, although he had already won uh, an award in Horizonti two years ago, and then he was two time in the main competition in Venice, Shinya Tsukamoto. The title of the movie is Okage. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Tsukamoto comes back to a theme that is important for him, the consequences of war on human beings. In this case, a soldier who was traumatized by war, a woman forced to become a prostitute to survive, and a child who remained alone and who represents uh, the ray of hope uh, that closes the movie. I thank uh, Tsukamoto for accepting to come in competition in Horizonte. I thank him very much for this. The last movie in competition for Horizonte is another debut film, a surprising film. I abuse sometimes. It makes us think of the debut film by Bellocchio, Ibuni in Tasca, an adolescent of a bourgeois family sent to a college, an Islamic college, during the second half of the 1990s. 
It is uh, the tale of uh, religious integralism, homosexual pulsions, and political tensions, a movie that explains where, what are the origins, uh, what the origins are of Erdogan's Islamic Turkey and of the political elites of today, uh, burning topicality, uh, a very topical movie. Horizonte Extra is the section we inaugurated three years ago, a small section with the new titles, the Bew movies, with an award uh, attributed by the public and supported, sponsored by Armani Beauty. The screenings of Horizonte Extra will be in the evening at Sala Giardino, the Red Cube, with the presentation with the authors of the movies and followed by meeting with the director and interpreters moderated by Chiara Tagliaferri. The movies in competition are nine this year, Botaione by Luana Bairami, a young uh, actress uh, from Kosovo. French naturalized who lives and works in Paris. She has gone back to a country in Kosovo to shoot this movie set in the 1990s. Two adolescents coming from uh, a faraway village in the region to uh, attend university. Uh, again, another portrait of adolescents, of the hopes and of the betrayed hopes of uh, a generation that has been abandoned after the independence, uh, the newly obtained independence of Kosovo. The film is produced by Rick Toledano and Olivier Nagash, the directors of The Untouchables, a very successful French movie remade in many countries of the world. Forever, Forever by Anna, one of the two movies produced this year, com completed this year in Ukraine, a debut film by Anna Buryakova. It was a shot before the beginning of the war, and it has been completed only recently with great difficulties. Another portrait of a young woman uh, in a school context, uh, again, uh, a theme we will see very often this year. And this is understandable because the adolescents, uh, young girls and boys, were hardly hit by the pandemic. Uh, it is maybe a chance, but it is might not be a chance. From Argentina, we get a film uh, by a female director, Daniela Goggi, with Italian origins. Uh, the fourth uh, long uh, feature film, uh, her fourth feature film, uh, The Kidnapping of an Entrepreneur after uh, the coming back of democracy in 1985, when uh, the members of the repressive services of police and the army of the uh, generals were still operating uh, in hiding, protected by the power. Uh, we find again situations and themes we have seen in two movies, in, a, two, a mov in two Argentinian movies in Venice, Argentina, uh, 1985 by Santiago Mitre and Il Clan by Pablo Trapero. The other film in competition for Horizonte Extra dealing with boxing, the debut uh, movie of Jack Houston, a well-known uh, actor. The Day of the Fight is the title, his first uh, film as a director. The last 24 hours of uh, a boxer, a former champion who 
left the ring because of an accident, uh, who decides to go back to fighting to regain the title he had lost, well aware of the consequences this decision might, ca might cause uh, a pilgrimage to uh, come to terms with his past, with the people he had had in his life, his father uh, with Alzheimer, uh, his divorced wife, uh, a friend of his who had become a priest, and uh, his beloved daughter. A film that is full of quotations from uh, the different movies on boxing of the American cinema with a great mastery and a great uh, emotional involvement. In the Land of Saints and Sinners by Rob Lawrence is the third feature film of this American director. Irish production shot in Ireland. Uh, he was a collaborator of Clint Eastwood's. Rob Lawrence is setting this story in a remote uh, Irish village at the time of civil war with the uh, attempt with uh, bombings by uh, terrorists. A ruthless killer deciding to abandon his profession looking for redemption after a life of uh, sins. I have uh, anticipated the only Italian title participating in the Horizonte Extra competition, the debut movie by Michaela Ramazzotti, one of the best Italian actresses, who reveals a great mastery in telling the story of a young girl uh, trying to be to make a career in cinema as a makeup artist but she had to come to term with a dysfunctional family she has uh, learned a lot from uh, two movies that she has taken part in uh, as a protagonist la pazza gioia by paolo virzi and vivere by francesca archibugi and then you will understand why i mentioned these two movies Pet Shop Boys, but the first movie by Olmo Schnabel with an important cast. Jack Ive, uh, Dario Yatzbeck, uh, the brother of Garcia Benal, William Dafoe, Emmanuel Seigneur, Peter Saskard. A very original movie on two friends who have a very difficult, different characters. Uh, Alejandro running away from his uh, uh, Mexican family and a shy Jack uh, who has to face extraordinary experiences that will upset his life. Stolen by Karan Taipal is a, a debut film as an Indian. A debut film, the last day before closing uh, the program, we look on the platform where the movies are loaded, we see the last film we have to see, and we find a surprising piece of work. This happens quite often when selecting movies. And this is one of the most joyful moments in our work. We didn't know anything about this movie. It is a, a surprising piece of work. It starts as a social drama on the kidnapping of newborn babies uh, with a racket uh, that uh, gives these uh, babies uh, to the families who can pay for them. But the movie develops in an action thriller, breathtaking action thriller, with chases and uh, lynchings built with a surprising uh, level of tension. The last uh, moving competition for Horizonte Extra, L'Homme d'Argile from France by Anaïs Delen, the debut uh, in directing of a young Belgian actress who works in France. It will certainly provide some surprises. Uh, a 
partially sexual, erotic movie uh, on the myth of Gollum in a romantic approach with uh, some aspects of social critic. Somebody mentioned Ritratto Ovale, Oval Portrait by Edgar Allan Poe. A very good performance of the interpreters, Emmanuel De Vos and Raphael Thierry. Out of competition, there is a special screening, a documentary co-produced by Canal Plus and Rai Cultura, La parte del leone, una storia della mostra, an historic overview of stock material and interviews made with protagonists of cinema of the past and of the present. This is our choice to celebrate the 80th edition of the Venice Film Festival. The documentary will then be screened, uh, be, will be broadcast on the two uh, networks, but it will be screened in, in the first premiere on uh, the 2nd of September, Saturday, the 2nd of September. Out of competition, again, out of competition, we have series. For some time, we have been devoting part of our program to TV series to this year. The first is D'Argent et de Sang, by, written and produced by Xavier Giannoli, a director we know very well, as he has been in competition two times in Venice and many times in, uh, in Cannes. This is the showrun of the series of 12 episodes, 50 minutes each. We will see the 12 of them in a kind of marathon subdivided in two parts. But the last day, they will be screened all together, 10 hours of screening. The episodes were directed by Jean Oli and Frédéric Janson, with Vincent Landon interpreting the role of a magistrate entrusted in 2008 the responsibility for a new special uh, core to contrast tax frauds, uh, tax fraud against uh, the TV uh, VAT tax, uh, a very famous uh, uh, robbery by a group of uh, French gangsters trying to evade VAT with uh, fake uh, companies who managed to subtract more than 300 million euros to the, to the uh, tax authority. The story is uh, told as a, as a thriller, and we were really fascinated by it. The second series come from Bosnia. Bosnia the governor, uh, signed by two showrunner, Yasmila Zvanic and Damiri Brom and Damiri Ibrahimovic, who have written and produced the series. We will just see two episodes of this series. At the center of the series, with six episodes is the figure of a female magistrate having to face uh, a story of bullism and suicide involving her, her, her son, a very good performance by the protagonist, Jasna Duricic, who also interpreted Quo Vadis by Jasmila Banic, who uh, that was in competition in Venice and that got many awards in the festivals around the world. Out of competition, non-fiction for documentaries. 
We start with Amor by Virginia Eleuteri Serpieri, a debut film by this young uh, artist from Rome. It is uh, part of those movies that use uh, cinema to make up for uh, a private breakout, uh, the drama of uh, uh, a depressed mother, the aquatic story of Rome and the uh, fantastic mythology of uh, Amor planet uh, are transformed into a visual poem, uh, a highly suggestive visual poem. Frente a Guernica by Ervant Janikian with the wife of uh, uh, with his wife uh, is the new uh, movie prepared by Museo Sofia Reina of Madrid that has uh, asked the Janikian to uh, describe the collection of material relating to this famous painting by Picasso. We are screening in Venice the longer version. Director's cut uh, uh, realized for the museum in Madrid. From Germany, we have a documentary, uh, Hollywood Gate. Uh, the title doesn't explain the content of the documentary. The director has uh, an Egyptian origin, Ibrahim Nashat. After the abandoning of Afghanistan by the Americans and the coming in power of the Taliban, he managed to be accredited uh, with the new govern government of the Taliban, who allowed him to spend a whole year following the new commander of the air forces, of the Taliban air forces in Afghanistan, only shooting what he was allowed to shoot until the military parade that one year later celebrated the first anniversary of the Taliban uh, uh, revolution. What he shoots is so disquieting that it is really worth seeing. Hollywood Gate uh, is referring to the uh, inscription on the American hangar where the Air Forces, American Air Forces, were hosted before they left the country. Neo Sora, the son of Ruichi Sakamoto, has realized this documentary, uh, uh, and which is the uh, uh, the shooting the the last solo piano concert of the father of the director, the last will, a testament, and a legacy, a spiritual legacy to for future generations of this great artist. He's alone in the studio in front of a piano, and he's performing some of his compositions for cinema, the most famous uh, pieces he composed for cinema. It is an extraordinary uh, documentary. I, I'm still moved if thinking of it. Another Italian documentary by Giorgio Verdelli, Enzo Iannacci Vengo Anch'io. Verdelli is specialized in creating documentaries on uh, um, Italian artists. He was in Venice with, documentary, with documentaries on uh, Enzo Bosso and uh, uh, Paolo Conte, and so Iannacci was um, a genius uh, a songwriter of the 1960s, 1970s in Italy. This movie has uh, stock, incredible stock material that allow us to rediscover or discover, if you were not lucky enough to follow his works, uh, his uh, uh, freaky uh, genial uh, approach to music. The last documentary out of competition is the latest documentary by Fred Wiseman, Menu Plaisir, Les Trois Gros. Fred Wiseman is 93 years old. He has made this documentary for hours long, and it is an incredible journey 
in the universe, in the mysterious universe that is behind uh, the stage of uh, one of the most famous uh, restaurants in France, Le Trois Gros. A journey you cannot abandon because it is describing everything that is behind the creation, the choice of uh, raw materials, uh, the creation of new uh, plates. Uh, if, you, if you love uh, cooking and restoration. This is an extraordinary journey for you. Another section, fiction, the closing film is La Sociedad de la Nieve by J.A. Bayona, a Spanish production for Netflix telling a famous story, the story of uh, the airplane that fell on the mountains uh, dividing Argentina and Chile with the survivors who had to remain for two months in extreme conditions, a survival movie, extremely fascinating with a group of very good young artists. Coup de chance. The new movie by Woody Allen, shot in France with a French cast in French. But it is a Woody Allen movie. Uh, coming back to uh, the themes he prefers, uh, chance, the role of chance in our lives. Uh, it go make us think of, makes us think of uh, Match Point, one of his uh, masterpieces. A uh, semi serious reflection and uh, melancholical reflection on the role of chance in our life. And then we have uh, Wes Anderson, who has transferred on the screen some tales of uh, an extraordinary writer, Roald Dahl. Uh, the Chocolate Factory. These are uh, short stories. The wonderful story of Henry Sugar, the longest of these uh, short films, uh, uh, drawing inspiration from uh, Dahl's uh, stories, uh, a typical uh, stylistic universe of Anderson meets uh, the surreal stories of this writer and creates this uh, masterpiece, a small masterpiece. I'm saying small because it, it is only 40 minutes uh, long, uh, but it is Wes Anderson in its most, in its purest state. Luca Barbareschi, The Penitent, the title of one of the latest uh, um, plays by, for theater by David Mamet. Uh, Luca Brabaresti translated the text uh, and brought it in the Italian theaters. Now he has uh, realized this uh, uh, version for cinema. He interprets as the protagonist, an American psychoanalyst uh, who is the victim of uh, an, an aggression campaign started on the social media after a patient of his made uh, uh, a killing in, uh, in a school. The film is uh, facing uh, topical uh, themes uh, with uh, polemic, uh, with the typical polemic approach of the author, but with a great depth uh, as uh, the text by Mamet requires. L'Ordine del Tempo, Out of Competition, is the latest movie by Liliana Cavani who celebrated a 90th anniversary this year. She will be awarded the Golden Lion for a lifetime achievement. It draws inspiration from an essay with the same name by Carlo Rovelli. It is not a documentary. It is not uh, an essay. It is uh, a fiction movie with the story set in 24 hours in a villa on, on the sea with a group of friends, uh, with, uh, uh, with the threat of uh, a catastrophic uh, uh, event for our planet. 
you will discover the movie. Again, out of competition, the new movie by Alex de la Porte, Vivant, Alex de la Porte, was in competition in Venice in 2014 with Le Dernier Coup de Marteau, The Last Hammer Blow. This is a collective movie on a group of assault editors of a TV channel on a reportage, uh, on topical reportage, a great performance of the actors with, uh, with Roshti Zem, who is also performing a wonderful ballet on uh, the music of the Bolero by Ravel, uh, who is really worth the whole movie. Welcome to Paradise, a short film by Leonardo Di Costanzi, 24 minutes, realized with the students of Scuola di Cinema di Bobbio, Cinema School of Bobbio, directed by Marco Bellocchio. They produce a short film every year with the students of the course, uh, covering the different technical roles. Dali by Quentin Dupieux is the new movie of a director, of a cult director. He was in Venice a few years ago. He was many times in Cannes. He surprises us and entertains us with his surreal works, with his humorism. And uh, this time, he jokes on the limitless narcissism of artists. In this case, Salvador Dali interpreted by four different actors who perform the role, depending on the scenes. A very funny movie, very short also, 75 uh, minutes. The Kane Mutiny Court Martial by William Friedkin, the version for cinema of a theater play that is very famous in the States, not so famous in Europe, uh, brought on stage by many actors and directors uh, for theater. At least uh, another two uh, versions for cinema. The first in 1955 by Edward Dimitri with Humphrey Bogart, and the second in 1988 by, directed by Robert Oldman for Showtime with Michael Murphy in the main role. We have Kiefer Sutherland this year, this time. Uh, Showtime is the producer, directed by William Friedkin, who has directed this movie uh, sitting on a wheelchair because of his problems. I was on set and I saw that the troupe had a, an extraordinary relationship of admiration uh, for the director. Making of by Cedric Kahn. Cedric Kahn is a French author who is not yet valorized as it should be. His second film this year, his first movie had opened the Kanzen in Cannes, and it was received with a great success. This is a kind of Effetto Notte, Day of Night by Truffaut, the story of a movie, of a film. In our time, with uh, union uh, problems uh, and uh, conflicts, one of the most beautiful recent movies on the fascination and the difficulty of making films today. Agro, Agro Drift, uh, difficult to describe with words, you know Harmony Corinne. He's the cinema maker, the most anarchical, restless uh, cinema maker in America. He was many times in Venice, also in competition, both loved and hated. I do not know how to describe this movie, if not by saying that Corinne is destroying all barriers between 
the role of a cinema maker and uh, an artist. He's also a, a, a painter, a well-known painter. This is not a movie. This is a contemporary art work. It might be in one of the pavilions of uh, uh, the Biennale Arte exhibition. But it is also perfectly uh, suited to this uh, film festival. You will discover this yourself. Hitman, the latest movie by Richard Linklater, uh, a director who had great fun, and also we had great fun in watching the movie. It is staging an American psychologist who is working uh, undercover for the American police, uh, disguised as a killer. who has to uh, kill somebody. Uh, he disguises himself in a different way every time in order to have uh, the uh, committants uh, arrested before they obtain their result. Glenn Bauer, the protagonist, who performs uh, the role of the psychologist, is irresistible. And then uh, the latest movie by Roman Polanski, a long uh, uh, work uh, to complete it. It finally reaches Venice, the palace. His previous movies had won uh, the jury award, great jury award in Venice. This movie was written with his old friend and colleague at the cinema school, uh, Jerzy Skolimowski. The story has been anticipated by the magazines uh, in the last few months. Uh, it is one day of preparation of the latest uh, New Year's Eve uh, in the year 2000 in a luxury hotel in the Swiss Alps uh, with grotesque and surreal characters uh, trying to satirize uh, a humanity made of uh, individuals who are unaware of their lack of humanity and social commitment. The last out of competition movie this year is a tribute to Pema Tseden, who is the greatest author in Tibetan cinema, a director, a screen play writer, script writer, who died a few days after completing this movie. He was three times in competition in Orizzonti. He also got an award with, his, with one of his previous movies. He disappeared on the 8th of May, and we thought it was necessary for us to, it was compulsory for us to tribute him uh, an homage. We have come now to the most important part of this conference. Venezia 80 competition, many movies, 23 films, 23 like last year. I didn't manage to renounce to any of the movies that most convinced me. They are numerous, but they are all extraordinary. Out of these 23 movies, 15 are made by directors participating to the competition for the first time. The first is Comandante. We have decided to choose to open uh, the film festival after uh, uh, the withdrawal of the movie by Guadagnino. Uh, this movie is a great productive effort, production effort uh, by Eduardo De Angelis with Pierfrancesco Favino, a great uh, interpreter. The other movies, Bastarden, coming from Denmark, the director, 
was uh, Golden Bear in Berlin and an academy uh, candidate in, 20, in 2013 with Royal Affair. He had never been in Venice. He collaborates again with one of the best uh, Danish actors uh, known also internationally, Mads Mikkelsen, who interprets a former officer of the Danish army who uh, in the mid uh, 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 800, 8th century, 18th century tries to colonize the deserted heathland in Jutland, uh, only inhabited by Rom and uh, gangsters. Dogman by Luc Besson. I hope this movie that has convinced us will also convince those spectators and critics who think that Luc Besson can only direct action movies. This is much more than that. I'm not telling you anything about uh, the plot. It is really surprising. It is a monument to an extraordinary Australian actor, Caleb Landry-Jones, who make a performance that will become memorable. You will discover this very soon. Bonello had never been in competition in Venice. The title of the movie is La Bête. Aseidou, Le Aseidou and Jean McKay are the interpreters. Uh, freely in referring to a, a tale by Henry James, a novel by Henry James, set in the future, in the future where emotions are a threat. And the protagonist, Lea Seydou, decides to entrust to a, a company uh, using artificial intelligence to allow individuals to uh, re-experience their past lives, uh, freeing them from their emotions an extremely topical movie. Or Saison by Stefan Brise. He was in competition in Venice already. For his 10th movie, he decides to abandon the comfort zone that has characterized his works with a social uh, theme. He's telling of a couple meeting again by chance 15 years after their separation. He's a successful actor uh, in a situation of crisis because he has uh, uh, rejected the possibility of going to theater, Guillaume Canet. She's a piano player, uh, a pianist, Alba Orvacher, who lives in an isolated village uh, on the North Sea. Uh, she never over. She had never overcome the trauma of her separation. Great performances, a great formal rigor, and a great emotional intensity by the director. Enea by Pietro Castellitto is the second movie. Uh, really much expected. He is, uh, uh, he really surprised us with this first movie. This is even more ambitious as a movie in terms of production as well. His first movie was I Predatori. He is interpreting the film together with many actors. You see the list of them, uh, many of his relatives. We find the themes of his cinema. It is uh, uh, the story of uh, Rome, uh, periphery of Rome, a story of uh, problematic families, young entrepreneurs, uh, ruthless uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, drug smugglers, and DJs that are colluded with mafia. Uh, great ugliness, a kind of great ugliness uh, young people can perfectly recognize with. Maestro by Bradley Cooper. Uh, the news had circulated of this movie being in Venice, and it is so. This is the second work uh, as a director by uh, Bradley Cooper after the star, a star is Born, in competition this time. 
it is the biography of an extraordinary genius, Leonard Bernstein. But Bradley Cooper is interested in only one aspect of his multifaceted life and activity as an artist, that is to say, the relationship with uh, his wife, whom he loved, despite their tormented love story. Uh, the wife is Carrie Mulligan, and Bradley Cooper is Leonard Bernstein in this film. Again in Venice, Sofia Coppola, coming back to Venice after many years, with Priscilla, is the title of the film. It is the attempt to tell the real story of the young wife of Elvis Presley, whom he met in Berlin when he was already famous, when he was serving in the American base in Germany. Something remarkable is that this movie is a co-production of the, the apartment together with uh, uh, Coppola's uh, production house. And the apartment with this movie is showing its uh, determination to uh, enter the international production uh, stage. Finalmente l'alba by Saverio Costanzo, another anticipated uh, film movie. Saverio Costanzo comes back to cinema after the international success of the first series of L'Amica Geniale he directed. This is the second most important productive investment in cinema for Italy this year, produced by Wild Side by Mario Giannani, again uh, trying to build and cement his production company, a film with a great cast. Italians and Americans, uh, the story of the loss of innocence uh, of a young girl uh, uh, who finds herself one day and one night in the uh, golden world of Cinecitta of the 1950s, a fascinating but cynic and cruel world. Uh, the reconstruction of, uh, of the of the time uh, is great. Uh, you will discover this. Lubo by Giorgio Diritti. It was a discovery. I'm not a great fan of Giorgio Diritti, but I must admit this. Diritti really not only surprised me, but also convinced me with an extraordinary film, the real story of Lubo Moser, a young Yenish, one of the three ethnic group of the gypsies of a German origin that lived in, the, in Switzerland in the 1930s, pers prosecuted, persecuted by the Germans, but also by the Swiss, because there was a, a go partly governmental program that authorized the kidnapping of the children of the Yanish to uh, cancel the problem of nomadism in Switzerland. These children were sent to religious institutions. They were taken away from their parents who lost the contact with their children. The children were given to Swiss families, treated like little slaves, young slaves, forced to sleep uh, with the animals they had to take care of. A terrible story. The Swiss government admitted the responsibility for only lately, and they never paid uh, uh, compensations to the families uh, of the gypsies. A surprising movie. A very long movie, three hours, full of unexpected events I will not tell you about. It is like a feuilleton, 
full of pain and social uh, denunciations. Ava DuVernay, for the first time in competition, a uh, black American director, well known in the US, less known in Europe. The title of the film is Origin, taken from an essay of the Pulitzer Prize uh, winner Isabel Wilkerson. It sold uh, many copies in the US in 2020, and it changed forever the discussion on racism in the American society in the US. The film, an ambitious film that mixes uh, its nature of an essay as to uh, the uh, style of a biography to discuss uh, uh, Isabel Wilkerson's uh, thesis stating that racism is based in the divisions that are typical of each society and uh, based on the system of castes that prevent uh, the movements uh, among different castes between uh, black and white, blacks and whites, for example. Castes, therefore, are one of the major causes of social injustice we have to come to terms with. The Killer by David Fincher, The Killer by David Fincher is another widely expected movie produced by Netflix. It, Fincher had not been in Venice after Fight Club. It was in Venice in 1999 with my first uh, direction. It was not uh, uh, well received in Venice, although it became a cult movie later. It was too disconcerting, too surprising for the time. It divided both uh, the audience and the critics. This is a thriller. I know not telling you anything about the plot. I will just add that it is taken from a graphic novel, a French graphic novel by Yakamon and Magz. The director wanted to bring it on screen, and it, he has done so with uh, a couple of uh, important interpreters, Michael Fassbender and Tilda Swinton. Memory by Michel Franco. He was two times in competition in Venice. This is the third time. This is an independent, American independent production set in New York. New York is a third character together with the two main characters, Jessica Chastain and Peter Saskard. We know nothing about the movie. You do not find anything on this movie on the, on the web. He was, uh, he kept everything uh, secret. You will discover it when you see it. Io Capitano is another Italian movie in competition by Matteo Garrone, uh, much discussed. The contemporary odyssey of two young African girls starting from Dakar, uh, following the dream of reaching Europe, and they are forced instead to discover the difficulties in the desert, the tension centers in Libya, and the dangers in crossing the Mediterranean on this uh, poor ships. Garrone is abandoning his Baroque style and chooses instead a very simple and direct style of narration taking the point of view of the two protagonists. And then a surprise. It was a surprise for us when we found it on our platform. Nobody knows that Amaguchi, after winning uh, the Academy Award with Drive My Car, was working on a new project. Evie Does Not Exist is the title of the film as against Drive My Car that 
was a film of three hours. This is just one hour and 46 minutes and tells of a company in Tokyo that is trying to build a luxury camp uh, resort, camping resort uh, in a village in the mountain, endangering the um, environmental balance uh, and has to clash against the opposition of the local population. For us, it was love at first sight. The green border, uh, uh, a Polish movie by Agnieszka Holland, another movie we know nothing about. It was a shot uh, uh, in semi-hiding because uh, uh, the theme is unfriendly to the Polish government. It describes dramatic, uh, surprising story of uh, illegal immigrants uh, eluded by the Belarusian authorities that they can enter Europe through the Polish border. And when they get there instead, that they are rejected by the Polish police. They are sent back to Belar Belarus uh, and again sent back to Poland in this uh, endless uh, carousel that has cost the life of thousands of people, causing suffering and pain with the total uh, indifference of the rest of Europe. The Theory von Allem is a debut film. It can be considered as a debut film because Tim Kroger had only made another movie that was uh, 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 a movie made for the School of Cinema of Berlin. It was uh, presented in Venice last uh, seven years ago. This movie instead will be uh, distributed, commercially distributed. It is one of the first movies we have seen in January this year. And we were conquered by the ambition of this director, creating a purely cinematic imagination with different quotation coming from going from Wells to Fassbinder to Ulmer Lang, Siodma Kitchcock, without forgetting the Italian B-movies of the 1970s. This film is a gothic nightmare, a metaphysical melodrama full of science fiction, digging under the mountain of classical German cinema to create a new mythology for contemporary cinema. You will tell us whether we were wrong. It is a really fascinating film. You do not understand everything, but it is really fascinating. Poor Things by Yorgos Lanthimos. Uh, uh, widely announced uh, in the previous uh, months, uh, a coming back of Lanthimos to Venice, who won an award with this previous movie. This is a film that works with fantasy and a great richness, uh, visual richness, the Gothic cinema themes. The interpreter, Emma Stone, who would not be with us because of, of the strike, she is really Unchanged. She's like a Frankist, a female Frankenstein, a young uh, woman brought back to life by a crazy genial scientist uh, interpreted by William Defoe. She runs away from her creator, and a lawyer falls in love with her. And she starts a journey across the continents, uh, sexually voracious, which is uh, one of the unexpected aspects of this movie, uh, a breath of fresh air uh, as against the conformi, conformi, conformity we find in contemporary cinema. El Conde by Pablo Rarain, another return of an author who has been in Venice many times. You know everything about the movie. Uh, 
a Baroque version of the vampire uh, genre with Pinochet, who wasn't, who, who is not dead really, who wakes up after the funeral to go on uh, sucking the blood, both metaphorically and reality, and reality of his uh, fellow citizen, a harsh political attack to his country that wasn't able to come to terms with its past uh, who, and that did not uh, uh, did not send uh, the dedicator to a trial. The new film by Michael Mann, uh, who has been as absent from uh, the festivals for many years, he has uh, worked to this project, Ferrari. He mentioned this when he chaired the uh, jury in Venice in 2012. He went to Maranello uh, on that occasion to meet the management of the Ferrari plant. This project has been completed. The film focuses on a brief period, the crucial years of the crisis of this uh, company the years of the tragic accident that will stop uh, the uh, Mille Miglia competition and uh, telling the story of uh, the female, the family crisis of Ferrari and his wife uh, with many human uh, nuances. Uh, allow me to add that only hardly did a foreign uh, director recreate uh, the uh, situation of Italy in those years. Adagio by Stefano Sollima is the last uh, Italian uh, moving competition. Sollima comes from a series of uh, successes uh, with action movies and TV series that have become uh, uh, an international uh, uh, point of reference. Solima is still waiting for uh, the recognition of the role he deserves in the important Italian cinema, author cinema, Italian author cinema. I think Adagio is a real breakthrough in this sense. It is a dystopic uh, film on uh, a city of Rome surrounded by fires looming on the capital. The film is like a cathedral uh, celebrating the funeral of the characters and the themes that have made Romanzo Criminale and Suburra two cult series telling about this genre uh, series, uh, contemporary Italy, uh, telling about this type of, of, uh, of Italy better than any uh, other kind of uh, cinema. Another Polish film in competition unfriendly to the government again, um, realized by Malgorazza Shumovka and Michael Englert, the woman of. It tells the story, the real story, for most of it, of a transsexual uh, person who uh, marries and decides instead he is a woman, she is a woman and makes this step at the end of his life after fighting against uh, bureaucracy and, uh, uh, and the hostility of uh, most uh, uh, people around her. Uh, Poland is one of the most transphobic countries in Europe, but this is not a militant uh, film. Uh, it is a kind of a melodrama stressing feelings, uh, frustrations, desires of those who would like to have their rights uh, recognized. The, the protagonist is a real transsexual actress. The last filming competition is Holly, Holly by Fian Troch, who had 
won the award as best film in Orizzonte in 2016. And the jury uh, had, uh, had been long cited on that occasion be because Troch, Troch is coming back with uh, an extremely mature film facing the theme of uh, discomfort in adolescence. A girl who has a strange power, special power. I won't tell you more. I'm not uh, telling you more about a film that is playing with the codes of horror movies, although in the end it is a love movie. So we have come to the end of this conference. Uh, I wasn't uh, quite short. I hope you are curious about the program. Allow me, however, to express my gratitude. I want to thank the American productions and the American directors who have decided to be here in Venice. Allow me to thank President Roberto Ciccutto, whose support and collaboration has enabled me to work in full autonomy. I want to thank the director the general manager of Biennale, Andrea Del Mercato, a great organizer who is leading an extraordinary team of technicians, uh, stage designers. We are being admired and complimented by all the participants who discover how the Venice Film Festival can be uh, uh, efficient. I want to thank Ufficio Cinema, the cinema office, people working very hard and with great love for the sector. I want to thank my assistant, Angela Savoldi, who is here with me, without whom I couldn't do what I'm doing. She's doing a lot of what I should do myself. She is uh, relieving part of the burden I have to bear. I want to thank uh, the whole team, 14 people of the uh, selection team, helping me to, to see these, these 4,000 movies we, received every, we receive every year in Venice. I want to thank Pascal Dio responsible for the Venice Production Bridge, a successful initiative we have in Venice, our small co-production market. I want to thank Savina Neirotti, chairing the Biennale College Cinema. I have already thanked Michelle Reyak and Liz Rosenthal for Venice uh, Immersive, and Alessandra Speciale, guiding Final Cut in Venice, special collaborators And finally, I want to thank Paolo Lughi, our head of the press office, and all those who have not met, whom I have not mentioned, but I have all of them in my heart. Thank you all, and see you all in Venice. Thank you, ovviamente, ringrazio il direttore Barbera. Allow me to thank Barbera. The institutions, the Ministry for Culture, the City of Venice, represented today here by Councillor Roger Pea, the Superintendency for Archaeology, Fine Arts and Landscape of Venice and the Lagoon, and all those who contribute to the success of the Venice Film Festival. Our sponsors uh, for the eighth edition of this film festival, main sponsor Campari, Cartier, Mastercard, and Armani Beauty, Vivendi, Lexus, UPS, Meshandon, Repower, Telios, Major Events Media, Canon, Radio Italia. Rai, main and host broadcaster of the film festival and media partner of La Biennale di Venezia. I want to thank Alberto Barbera again and his staff all those who are part of the team, not only of the cinema sector, all those who accept everything I ask of them, 
besides uh, exceeding their ordinary tasks. We close this press conference here for the presentation of the 80th edition of the Venice Film Festival. Do not forget the other festivals and exhibitions of the La Biennale di Venezia. Thank you so much.